Hello, welcome. In this unit, we are going to introduce uh, weaving fabrics and we are going to explain uh, issues about fibers and concisely we are going to speak about fibers classification. Well, textile uh, materials are based on fibers and uh, fibers are made of uh, some units which are called monomers. Those monomers are arranged into different uh, chains which are called polymers and this polymer is organized inside the fiber both in order or disorder ways but this is not the issue of this subject. What is interesting for us is to know that every fiber is made of different chains we are called polymer. Depending on the polymer, many of the properties of the fiber will be assigned. Okay, the criteria to classify fibers could be depending on different aspects. For example, common fibers, because they are used for common uses like garments, or technical fibers, because they, the fibers are used for technical uses, or other kind of criteria, like for example the biodegradability of the fiber. Well, if we focus on the common fibers, we can say that we've got natural fibers and chemical fibers. The natural fibers are uh, classified depending on the kind of polymer that we are going to find inside the fiber, the organic ones or inorganic. Uh, inside the organic classification, we can find that the polymer can be obtained from animal or from vegetables. And uh, if we focus, for example, in animal fibers, the polymer will be a protein and this protein is transformed into a fiber depending on the kind of the animal that produces it. For example, if it's the hair of the animal, we can find wool, angora, cashmere, mohair, depending on the animal. And if it's a secretion from the animal, then we've got the silk. If we move to vegetable fibers, we can find that they come from different parts of the plant. For example, the seeds, the leaf, the trunk. And inside the seeds, the most common one is the cotton, but we can find another ones like enough, retama, coco, etc. If they come from the leaf, we can find esparto, sisa, lavaca, formium and different others. And from the trunk, the same. We have the common known linen, but we also include hem, jute, raffia, ramio and many others. If we move to the inorganic group, then this kind of fibers can proceed from rocks or from metals. If they come from rocks, they are called asbestos, or if they come from metals, they are called metallic fibers. If we move to the chemical fibers, then we can find that uh, there is a big difference with the previous ones. In this case, we cannot find the fiber in the nature as a fiber. What we obtain is the main material from the uh, different resources and we transform it into fibers. If it's a natural polymer, we can obtain cellulose, which is transformed into fibers of viscose, acetate, lyocell, modal, cupro, etc. Or protein, for example, the protein from the milk, casein, or alginate, or any other. Then we have inside organic group another one, which is the synthetic polymer. Which is a synthetic polymer? The synthetic polymer is a polymer made in the laboratory. So, or in the laboratory or in a company. So it's made synthetically. In this group, we can find polyamides, which could include nylon or aramide, polyester, polypropylene, polyethylene, chlorine fibers, fluorine fibers, etc. If we move to inorganic fibers, we will find that there, there are different ones which can contain, for example, glass 
fiber, carbon fiber, metallic ones, basalt, copper or any others like inox or different kind of inorganic compounds which are transformed into fibers. All these uh, fibers are not found as a fiber uh, itself. We need to manipulate the polymer to obtain the fiber by a chemical spinning. Well, this is uh, focused on the classification of common fibers. But for example, if we move to technical fibers, we can find fibers which have been classified previously, which give us high strength, fire resistance, antibacterial, and they would be classified depending on that kind of properties. Okay. With this, we have studied the classification of fibers and it's really important to be able to attribute some properties because many of them depend on the nature of the polymer. Okay, the properties will be studied in the next video. Thank you very much for your attention.